Hello everyone, uh, I am Dr. Yasha Mukheen, uh, I am a pediatric INE specialist and assistant professor at the Department of Microbiology, Santosh Medical College, Ghazibar. And today I am going to discuss about bloodstream infections per se. Uh, so, uh, if you all must know that bloodstream infections uh, are usually because of the presence of microorganisms in blood and they constitute a very serious condition uh, amongst the infectious diseases that we come across. So microbial invasion of bloodstream can be very uh, serious and uh, immediate consequences could lead to shock or uh, multiple organ failure or disseminated intravascular complications. Coming to few terminologies that I would like to uh, stress upon today is what is bacteremia, what is septicemia and what do you mean by just presence of parasites, viruses or fungi in blood. So bacteremia is nothing but just the presence of bacteria in blood without any multiplication. So that's the key word, without any multiplication is bacteremia. Whereas if you talk of septicemia, that is the ba bacteria when it circulates and actively multiplies in the bloodstream, that is something which is known as septicemia. So it may be because of uh, the multiplication of the bacteria per se or production of toxins that the patient starts having symptoms and we call the patient as septicemic. Uh, mere presence of uh, viruses, parasites or fungi is termed in its own way like viremia, fungemia or parasitemia. So a few other terms like what is uh, uh, bacteremias, uh, different types, what are the types? So there can be transient bacteremia, there can be continuous bacteremias or there can be something known as intermittent bacteremia. Coming to what is a transient bacteremia, so they occur spontaneously and with very minor uh, events that can occur in our day to day life like just brushing teeth or sometimes chewing food. So we have those loose gums and it may be so that, that's a transient bacteremia and it very rarely co can cause uh, septicemic states in the body. Coming to what is a continuous bacteremia, so organisms that are released into the bloodstream at a faintly constant rate. So in any time the, uh, the patient's uh, bloodstream would be harboring some amount of bacteria maybe in a faint trace or in, in a, a, a you know, exemplified manner, but any presence and that is throughout is known as a continuous bacteremia. So septic shock, endocarditis and other endovascular infections are uh, usually the causes of continuous bacteremia. Coming to what is an intermittent bacteremia? So they are the bacteria, uh, when the bacteria are released into the blood, of course intermittently and this can be seen in cases of an untrained abscess where the bacteria are released approximately 45 minutes before a febrile episode. An early course of meningitis, pneumonitis or pyogenic arthritis, all these can, be bigger, uh, can lead to intermittent bacterias. Coming to the uh, specific agents or etiological agents uh, of bloodstream infections, so we broadly classify it under bacteria or viruses or fungi or parasites. So coming to the uh, common causes that we come across mainly are bacteria. So coming to the bacteria etiology first. Uh, amongst the bacteria, uh, they are the majority of uh, with, uh, which can cause bloodstream infections and amongst them are the typhoidal, salmonella, uh, brucella, the spirochetes like leptospira or borrelia, basic group of pathogens, viridin streptococci and rickettsiae. Uh, other than that, like uh, we come across gram-positive, gram-negative cocci, gram-positive bacilli and gram-negative bacilli. So amongst that we have Staphylococcus aureus, beta-hemorrhagic streptococci, enterococci, neurococci if we go organism-wise. Then we, uh, amongst the gram-negative cocci, meningococci is known to cause septicemic and bacteremic states. Uh, bacillus anthracis and listeria amongst gram-positive bacilli and E. coli, klebsiella, uh, Enterobacter non, and any other non fermenters like Acinetobacter, Pseudomonas, Burkholderia, and Stenotrophomonas are all known to cause septicemic states. Sometimes we come across anaerobes like Bacteroides, which can also lead to uh, septicemic states. 
Uh, amongst the viral etiology, we have the HIV viruses and other human retroviruses, which basically and primarily involves the CD4 T lymphocytes and the macrophages. Then uh, agents of hemorrhagic fever like dengue, chikungunya, Ebola viruses, Marburg, Lassa, yellow fever and other viruses are usually infect the endothelial cells like yellow fever viruses can also lead to uh, septicemic states or bacteria uh, pyremias. Coming to other etiological, uh, viral etiology uh, that we can come across is Epstein Barr viruses, cytomegalin viruses. Amongst the parasites, uh, the most common that we come across is uh, tacozoid forms that we see in toxoplasmosis and uh, Vishwania, trypanomastigote forms of trypanosoma. All these can lead to parasitic uh, parasitemias. And candida is uh, known to cause candidemias that we come across and definitely can lead to septicemic states. Coming to types of uh, bloodstream infections, so again, sources could be an intravascular or an extravascular infection. And what could be the reasons that a person uh, gets these bloodstream infections? So, definitely some immunocompromised state in that person, uh, use of a broad spectrum antibiotics for a very long and prolonged time, invasive procedures, extensive surgeries, and debilitated patients. Prolonged survival of these debilitated patients can also be a factor that can contribute to the initial or the beginning of bloodstream infections. Coming to intravascular infections, uh, they originate from mainly the cardiovascular system, which uh, is definitely which involves the heart and the uh, pericardial region. It can lead to endocarditis, myocarditis, and pericarditis. All three can lead to septicemic states. Then infection of blood vessels surrounding can also lead to uh, septicemic states. Extravascular is basically we have a primary source uh, of infection and then that can, uh, the bacteria or the virus or any other etiological factor uh, was pose into the bloodstream. So primary source could be lungs that, that is a patient with pneumonia or a patient with urinary tract infection. These are the primary sources that is other from the bloodstream and then secondarily it involves the bloodstream. So uh, extravascular uh, uh, bloodstream infections are that way uh, notorious. Uh, commonly uh, the portal of entry in extravascular bloodstream infection is the genitourinary tract. The most common uh, pre presentation in patients that you would come across is urinary tract infection followed by pneumonia. So again, these two can lead to bloodstream infections later. Other than that, an untrained abscess, and surgical wound infection, and any biliary tract infection can lead to bloodstream infections. Uh, coming to the clinical manifestations, which is very important and something that you have to and have to look out in patients. So, uh, bloodstream infections have a bacteremic stage followed by a septicemic stage. And clinical manifestations are evident only in the septicemic stage because here the bacteria is multiplying actively and they release their toxins and byproducts. So which can again lead to uh, clinical manifestations in patients. Based on the severity and the extent of organ failure, two stages of bloodstream infections are denoted. One is the sepsis per se and the other is septic shock. So coming to the definition of sepsis, the sepsis is, uh, is defined as life-threatening organ dysfunction which is caused by a dysregulated host immune response to infection. Now how do we classify or how do we adjust that this patient has sepsis? So uh, we use a very common uh, method that is the SOFA scoring method and here we see various uh, uh, parameters like respiratory system, the partial, uh, partial oxygen, uh, tension with the uh, fractional oxygen uh, that is the ratio of PaO2 to, to FiO2. In uh, uh, population system we look at the platelet count, then uh, the serum bilirubin, the mean arterial pressure and the GCS that is the class performance scale and what is the serum creatinine and the urine output of the patient. So all this can be scored and anything that goes more than or equal to 2 
uh, the patient might have sepsis. There is something known as a quick SOFA score, the criteria. Here, it's, a, it's just like a bedside criteria uh, to expedite the diagnosis of sepsis. We use respiratory rate if the patient has more than 22 per minute, altered mentation and systolic blood pressure less than 100 millimeter per G. Now coming to septic shock, it is a subset of sepsis in which underlying circulatory and cellular meta metabolic abnormalities are profound and the patients with septic shock can be identified with a clinical construct of sepsis with persisting hypotension requiring vasopressors to maintain the mean arterial pressures and the serum lactate, le lactate level of more than 2 millimole per litre. So these two are the criteria mainly to denote a patient of septic shock and patients with septic shock usually have a bad mortality so almost up to 40% is uh, the mortality rate uh, in compared to sepsis uh, cases. I'll just brief, briefly talk about the lab diagnosis part because that's the major uh, way to diagnose a septic event in a patient. So uh, definitely uh, blood culture is the, uh, is the sample that you would be going for and collection of blood culture is very important. So we at least in adults need 8 to 10 ml of blood uh, per bottle of an adult for an adult and at least 1 to 3 ml of blood for pediatric bottles and at least two to three sets that is one set comprising of two bottles are uh, uh, advised in case of bacterial or septicemic cases and uh, these blood samples are dispensed at the bedside of the patient into in a sterile manner into the blood culture bottles now blood culture bottles are uh, or the blood culture systems could be of two types that is one is conventional one and the other is uh, automated blood culture system and convention one is uh, we, we have two types of conventional media so that's a monophasic medium or a castaneda or a biphasic medium and uh, the commoner one that we go for and we suggest also would be an automated blood culture system and the automated blood culture systems are mainly uh, by the name of Bactic or Bacti Alert that we are uh, commonly using these days and Bacteria Virtue is the most advanced one and uh, here the turnaround time and uh, the reading time, everything is automated. So after a signal from automated or any blood culture that we see if there is a turbidity, we go for a subculture and we go for identification of the organism uh, by conventional again or uh, uh, by automated methods like Malditoff. Again after identification we go for an antibiotic susceptibility testing for the organism and once uh, we get the results accordingly we need to treat remember and remember that before collecting the blood samples the patient should not be put on antibiotics only and only when all the samples for cultures are received from the patient an antibiotic can be started preemptively in that patient again treatment depends on the kind of organisms that is isolated but it also depends on the uh, kind of organism that circulates in your hospital. So if you have a high load of MDROs, you should uh, definitely go for a uh, preemptive therapy that would target one and escalate or de-escalate the treatment uh, as and when you get your culture reports. So I think that's all for today and I hope the session was good for you. We'll meet next time. Thank you.